Uh, so today, there is going to be a discussion about active versus passive income and active versus passive investing. So a lot of people get into this business not really understanding the nuances between being an active investor and being a passive investor. And today, we're going to destroy all those myths and get the truth because there's a lot of nomenclature out there, a, a lot of myths about what passive investing is and what active investing is, especially when it comes to multifamily apartment complex. And so today, we're going to do a deep dive on that. So if you are joining in live, whether you're on Zoom or Facebook Live, go ahead and put in the chat real quick where you are from, where you located at, like seeing how far our reach is. For those who don't know me, I'm in the Atlanta area, been here for a few years so far. I'm loving it. And just who is this guy, right? Who is Jason Stubblefield? Who am I? Um, what have I been doing? So let me go ahead and just do a quick uh, screen share for those who don't know me, my name is Jason Stubblefield. I, I host this, this live meetup webinar once a week where we talk about everything uh, apartment investing. This is my website. So realapartments.com. That's R-I-L, realapartments.com. So what you're looking at right now. If you want to know more about me, the type of investments that we've done, prior investments, that we've made. If you go to rilapartments.com, you will see some of those deals there. So I've been investing in apartments since 2016. The company has purchased over a thousand units. And we are also now focusing on the affordable housing niche. So, <coughs> excuse me. So this is a little bit different than what we've been doing before, but it's it's great because we're we're actually bringing in community impact to the type of investments that we're doing. And so that's that's very special to me, something that I wanted to do for a long time. And if you go to realapartments.com, you can find out more about it. Also, if you're interested in hearing about these investments, if you think that these investments might be good for you, if you click on that Invest Now tab, uh, that'll bring you to join our investor club, right? You fill out this brief form, you will have a conversation with either me or somebody from our team, and we'll figure out if what we're doing and the type of investments we're doing are a good fit for you and your business. All right, so that's that's just a brief introduction to me. Let's go ahead and dive dive into the topic um, topic for to, today. So let's see. All right, we got Huntsville, Alabama, in the house. That's what I'm talking about. Al Alabama coming in strong. Let's um. Let's let's hop right over into the subject matter. So active investing versus passive investing. When you get into multifamily, it's usually for a reason, right? And that reason is that it's money, right? This is a, a monetary business and most people enter into it so that they can better themselves in some aspect financially. So my background in, in this, I used to be a software developer. So I was making, you know, six-figure salary. It was okay, but I was also getting just beat up with, with daycare bills. I had two, I, I got three kids, right? I think two were in, in daycare at the same time. So we were spending, you know, close to $4,000 a month just in daycare alone. So even though I was doing well financially, there was a lot of obligations. And as I looked around my career field, I didn't really see a lot of 70 year old software developers, right? It's, it's very much a churn business. There's always another software, another technology. Now AI is, is amongst us. Um, but I saw that, you know, years ago. And so I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. And so that's what led me to sort of seek other avenues of income outside of my job. And also they, they had that, that uh, what's that thing they, they talk about a lot these days? Uh, 401k or, you know, sub 401k. Well, anyways, I make it fun of it because to me, once I really investigated that, I was like, that's not going to be sufficient for me at all. So it led me to look for alternative terms of, of, of income. Uh, and that's what led me to first residential real estate. And then I saw that that was going to take me a long period of time. And then I moved over into multifamily. So once I got into multifamily, what I found is that you can make your single family goals a whole lot faster by investing in multifamily. So instead of buying one unit at a time, buying 10 units at a time, it's just appealing. So most people, when they step into this business, they have um, they have 
a goal and call that 10 to $20,000 a month. Most people can live off of that pretty comfortable. And with that, how do you get there? Right. How do you get 10 to 20,000 a month coming in passively in order to make that happen? So I want to go ahead and share my notes right now. I did enlarge the font. I know last, last week I went along with just really crappy font and I looked at the video. I was like, people can't read that. Um, but anyway, so you want to have 10 to $20,000 a month coming in, but most people lack the funding to go buy a property, just one multifamily asset that will produce that amount of income. So what we're going to cover today is active investing versus passive investing and closing and filling in those gaps about how you could earn that 10 to 20K per month, whether you're an active investor or whether you're a passive investor. And so there is an illusion when it comes to multifamily. I talk to people all the time and they say, Jason, I want to buy apartments. And I'm like, why? And they say, because I want to earn passive income. Yes, we all do. But one thing I want to get out of the way right now is that buying apartments, the way that I do it, and the way that most people do it is not passive at all. Right. This is a business that you are underwriting deals. You're writing offers. You're meeting with brokers. Once you buy a property, you have ongoing asset management. If you have investors, you're managing those investors. You are attracting more investors to you. So I think a lot of people, they just grasp the idea without understanding sort of the behind the scenes. So one thing I want to do is just demystify that to let you know that if you say I'm going to buy an apartment complex, it's definitely not something that you should do without really considering it as taking on a significant portion of your life. This is not a hobby, right? This is not something that you want to do on the side. And especially when people show up saying that I want to invest they don't have the money to invest themselves, so they want to attract capital from other investors. You should not be trying to put anyone's money into an investment unless you are serious about this, unless you are going to do the homework and the work to buy, uh, buy an apartment complex and do it with, with all of the, the strength, the capability that you have available to you at that time. So that's what that's what I want to get that out of the way when it comes to buying. It's not passive. This is something that is going to take work and it's going to take time. But everyone starts with wanting the, the passive income. All right. So the active investor um, strategy, if you have the money, right, which is, is relatively rare that most people have enough money to afford a large uh, apartment complex themselves, right? You could buy a deal, hire a property manager, and then your your job, even though it's it's not, it's maybe not 40 hours a week, but you're going to be the asset manager for the property that you buy, right? This is what you can do. If, hey, you're, you're sitting on um, half a million, a million dollars. You could probably get to that, that 10, 20K per month with just doing a deal or maybe, maybe two, right? Depending on your cap rate and the, the monthly branch, your financing strategy, all, all that comes into play too. But most people don't have the money. And so when you show them and say, hey, I want to get to $10,000 a month, but I don't have the money to do it myself. Well, how do you do that? How do you get from being a person who doesn't have the money to buy a complex and own, uh, own an apartment community that will give them 10K a month? Where do you close that gap at? And so my strategy for my strategy from doing that is what they call the flip, flip, hold method. And so what this is, is when you buy that first apartment complex, you're going into that deal understanding that it's not going to be your 10K a month property. You're really just trying to step your, you know, step your toe in the water, dip your toe in the water, what have you. You just want to do a deal, do that first deal, prove out the concept and be profitable while you're doing that. So my recommendation is you start with a five plus unit apartment and the largest one that you can do, right? So you want to do that, but you already know that's not a property that you're going to hold. You're going to flip it. You want to do that again. So the next one, now you want to do a bigger deal. You're not going to hold that property forever. You're going to flip it. But if you do that successfully two times, by the time you get to your third deal, you have now accumulated enough cash 
that you may say, I'm just going to buy that 20 unit, that 30 unit, that 10 unit, what have you myself and hold it. And that property will be able to kick off enough cash flow so that you can live the the semi passive investor um, lifestyle, right? Where you just have an asset that pays you monthly cash flow. And so if you do that, you understand the power of cap rates and you, you buy doing a value add strategy. The reason that this business is attractive is because the amount of money that you can make. So instead of flipping a single family house where you may make $50,000, now you're flipping a, a 20 unit apartment complex where you may make half a million dollars. Right. But if you do that a couple of times, now you've got the cash flow needed to go buy an apartment complex yourself. All right. So the truly passive method is where you invest like how I do. I invest passively in other people's deal. That means that even though I know how to buy and, and, and own apartment complexes, there are deals where I'm a passive investor. I give my money to somebody else. They do all the work that I've done. They found the deal. They asset manage the deal and they just send me a check. That's the truly passive method of doing it. Who should do that and who's that for? If you are a, per a person who has surplus funds, then you may want to consider that. If you're a person who says, you know what, Jason, you just said that's a whole lot of work. I don't necessarily want to put in that much work. Um, you know, you may want to consider just being a passive investor. And so how, how that works is if you have additional income, say that you make $150,000 a year, that's your income salary and you, and you like your job. But you are frugal enough to only live off 100000 So every year you have like a surplus of $50,000 or so. And what you can do is you invest that money passively into other syndication deals. And as you do that, now you start to earn income off of that. And you just let it snowball and build, right? If you un understand um, compound interest, all these deals should be gaining you cash flow and they should be rolling over. And so you just allow that snowball effect of capital to play out and you keep investing, right? That's what I call feeding the beast, right? So you just keep putting that money back into more and more investments. You'll look up and after a period of time, now you've got a significant amount of income that you can use as your retirement for the future. And by doing that, you you truly do nothing. This is truly passive, uh, passive investing. And so what's what's going to be best for you? Question number one is, do you like your job, right? So I've talked to people and they love what they do. They are satisfied in their career path. If you like that, then you very, you very well may want to consider just being a passive investor, right? If you don't like your job and you're saying like, hey, I, I want to do this, right? To earn a significant portion of income to replace my the income that I get from a job. Now you want to really look at being an active, um, an active investor, right? Secondly, is that this business is about really leadership and being a, a team player, right? So the first deal I did, I did it without a team, and I swore to myself, I'll never do that again. Right? It, it was one of the most stressful things that that I had ever done was trying to find a deal, underwrite a deal, raise all the money, be the asset manager, fill out the, the loan forms. It was, it was absolute chaos, right? But doing this business, what you end up doing is you build teams and your team is small in the beginning, but you're going to be able to, to grow it over time. So what you really need to say is like, am I a leader or what kind of person am I? If you're not a leader, but you still want to, um, you still want to be an active investor, you can become part of somebody else's team. So what I mean by that is there are people who are outgoing, who are charismatic, who are people, people, right? And, and they just are great at building networks. Usually that skill set doesn't transfer over to the person who likes to dig into a spreadsheet and analyze numbers and just do all the tedious tasks that go into making sure a deal has its merit, right? And, and so what you do is you end up compensating for your lack of skill with somebody else, right? In the beginning, you're going to have to wear a lot of hats, 
But what you can do is say, hey, I'm great at spreadsheets. I'm good with numbers. Let me just learn the underwriting portion. And I'm going to partner with somebody who's good at people. Maybe they have a growing network. And that's how I'll, I'll build this business. You can also, if you're good with people, you have a group of investors, then you can partner with somebody who has deals, bring your investors to that person's deal. And now you're starting to build an active career as well as building up some credibility while you eventually transition from being part-time to full-time, right? So those, those are the, the, the real differences, right? Active investors, it's going to be work. It's going to be, it's going to pay off, right? It's going to be valuable for you. It's going to, I mean, every deal you buy in a, in a, as an apartment complex changes your life, right? From the, from the time that you own that deal. But at the same time, you have to strategically get there, right? So understanding what it takes to be an active investor is what one thing I wanted to just um, hone in on today. And then passive investors, if you don't necessarily like your job, if um, uh, or if you do like your job, and if you have surplus capital, you can truly be passive, truly not have to do anything, but still get the benefits of multiple tenants under one roof, get the benefits of not having to have any property managers call you and be able to invest passively. Either way, I, I say you sort of make that determination and go all in on it. And the reason I, I say go all in is to reiterate on what I mentioned earlier when it comes to the, the level of work and using other people's money. If you want to, if you want to treat this as a hobby and you have you know, some capital yourself, maybe you got equity and you want to play around with it, that's fine. But if you're going to be raising money from other people, then you really need to first decide on what it is that you're going to do and then go all in. I made this post on, on, on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, and I'll just reiterate what it was. If, if you were to show up to a college campus and at, at a college campus, you said, I am going to I'm going to um, major in engineering, right? And then I'm going to get my degree in engineering. And I'm also going to then major in accounting and get me a degree in accounting. And then I'm going to major uh, in law and I'll, I'll go to law school, right? If you showed up to a college campus as a strategy, as that being your strategy, you would sound foolish to try to take all that on. But in the entrepreneurial world, we do the same thing, right? So an entrepreneur will say, I'm going to wholesale and I'm going to become a, a wholesaler. I'm going to make $200,000 in wholesaling. And after I finish wholesaling, now I'm going to buy some single family and I'll build up this, you know, I'll, I'll buy 10 units of single family. And then after I get the 10 units of single family and the, and the money from wholesaling, then I'll go buy an apartment complex, right? Essentially, you've done the same thing because you've overlooked the complications and the level of skill that it takes to be successful in anything, right? Anytime you show up to a market, there's another people in that market who have been there longer than you, who have done it better than you, and who already have established systems. So you have to go into any market just understanding that usually it takes more effort and it takes more time than maybe you thought. But if you do it the right way, and if you leverage and surround yourself with people who are doing it, you can greatly shortcut the the mistakes and the time that it would take if you just go out and sort of learn on your own. So just want to drive that point home. And now I'll open it up to see if we have any questions coming in. Um, uh, I've been going at this. Any questions? Let's see. We're checking. Myra. Um uh, <laughs> Louis, what's going on, my man? Um, all right. So that, that's it. No questions coming in. Hey, appreciate y'all. Hopefully this was impactful. Um, enjoy your weekend. Here, here's what I say. Close remarks. Uh, be the best version of you because it'll make you the happiest. Y'all take care and I'll see you next week. Later.